Good day, grade tens. In today's lesson, we're going to be looking at pure substances, specifically elements and compounds. So what is a pure substance? A pure substance consists of only one type of substance and they cannot be separated by physical means. In other words, we cannot separate it by sieving it or by using a magnet or by sorting, but we can separate it by using chemical means, in other words, through a chemical reaction. Elements and compounds are pure substances. So let's discuss elements for a second. Elements cannot be broken down into simpler substances. They are made up of atoms and as we know atoms are the basic building blocks of all elements. Now the periodic table was designed originally by a man called Dmitri Mendeleev and we will be studying the periodic table in more detail later. But what it is, is basically an organization of all the elements that we know about on Earth. In other words, all the natural found elements as, all, as well as all the man-made elements. And it actually provides us with a huge amount of information. But like I said, we are going to study that later in a different section. But if you look carefully at this periodic table, you can see that there are different letters. There's H and LI and MG. And you guys know that what is this? These are the symbols for the elements. So the elements can be represented by their symbols. So let me just change here to a pen. And I don't like the red. I'm going to change to blue. There we go. So for example, we can look at gold. And what is gold? Gold is a U. We've also got copper, which is just, these are just typical examples of elements and some of their symbols. Ones that we find are gold, which is AU, copper, which is CU, oxygen is O, iron, FE. Why is it FE? Because it is after the Greek or Latin word, which is ferrous, and that is iron. So now, in order to really understand science and to understand chemistry, you are going to have to know that if I write down an O, that that stands for oxygen. So we will be doing that later this year. Now compounds are made up of two or more elements that cannot be broken down by physical means, but they can be broken down by chemical means into elements. In other words, we can boil it, we can, make, we can melt it down, we can use a chemical reaction to break it into its base elements. Now compounds usually consist of molecules or formula units. In other words, the elements that make them up tend to occur in a fixed ratio. And if you look here, you can see that this is H2, O2, N2 and Cl2. And what we call these, these are called diatomic molecules. And what are they? They are basically the gases that are found naturally in the air and they are found naturally in pairs. Yeah, you've got nitrogen oxide, but you can see that it's made up of two different elements, nitrogen and oxygen, so they're not a diatomic molecule. Di means two and atom is obviously the atom. So these molecules are made up specifically, diatomic molecules are made up specifically of two atoms of the same type. Now, what we said was that the elements making of the compounds always occur in a fixed ratio. In other words, if I talk about water, you know that water is H2O. And what does that mean? That means that for every water molecule, there are two hydrogen atoms, that one and that one, and an oxygen atom. If I talk about carbon dioxide, you guys already know that we're talking about CO2. And what does that mean? That means that there are two oxygens for every one carbon. So compounds have to occur in a fixed ratio. Now how do we test for purity? Remember this section is talking about pure substances and we've said that elements and compounds are pure substances. But let's say for example I give you a glass of water and I say to you how pure is this? In other words, it might be a water, glass of water that has other things dissolved into it, like salt or something like that. So what we could do is we could use the melting point or the boiling point. What we could do is we could take our glass of water and we could 
put it in a beaker like our water and we could heat it up and we could measure the temperature at which it boils sorry about my terrible drawing skills we could boil it up and the temperature at what it boils what should it boil it it should boil at a hundred degrees Celsius right but now if it boils at a temperature lower than 100 degrees Celsius or maybe even higher then we know that there are other little things inside here that aren't water molecules it isn't pure water and then it depends on how far off it is from that 100 degrees Celsius as to how impure it is now another way that we can measure Purity is to look at chromatography, but now what is chromatography? Now I need to change back to arrow. Chromatography is a way of looking at basically how pure a substance is by a certain type of test. So let's have a look at a little video and we can look at this test. So what they've got is they've got a container with some ethanol which is diluted with some water. Now ethanol is an alcohol and we pour it into the little beaker and in this example we want to be looking at the purity of ink in a pen. In other words we want to know what makes up this black ink. You can see it's a black pen. So what do we expect? We expect that when we put this what happens is we put the piece of paper in the ethanol and the ethanol gets drawn up the piece of paper so what should happen is that this should stay black that's what we expect right because it's black ink but as it carries on you will see that slowly but surely it starts separating out into different colors and if we wait long enough we can see that actually it separates out. What are we seeing there? We're seeing like a magenta. We're seeing a bit of yellow. There we go. Magenta, yellow, and then there's some light blue, and then finally a little bit of black. Black ink at all. So it wasn't a very pure black at all. And that is how we test for purity. Right. Thank you, grade 10s. I hope that this has been useful to you.